Well, a gruesome discovery. More than 2,000 medically preserved fetal remains discovered inside the Illinois home of a deceased doctor who used to perform abortions in Indiana, where he lost his license back in 2016. Tonight, both states' attorneys general say they're going to work together to investigate this shocking case. Indiana's Attorney General Curtis Hill joins us now live. Sir, good to have you with us. Thank you, Shannon. What can you tell us about this case or what you hope to accomplish? Uh, it sounds overwhelming at first blush. Well, it is overwhelming. 2,246 unborn children discovered in a grisly manner. Uh, it's shocking. And uh, when we found out about it, we recognized that uh, uh, this was something that we needed to address because uh, there's every indication that those, uh, those unborn babies came from Indiana. Uh, so I reached out to the Attorney General from the state of Illinois because it was in Illinois, uh, Kwame Raoul, and we agreed that we would work together. And uh, I'm very pleased that Will County uh, State's Attorney's Office in Illinois and the Wills County uh, Sheriff's Department as well as the Coroner's Office have done a great job in uh, cataloging and getting information. And uh, we hope to, uh, uh, to cooperate with that and involve our Indiana system as well. And I know that this was, so it was in his home in Illinois. He had clinics in Indiana uh, in a number yes. of places. And I understand one of the clinics lost its licensing in 2015. Then he lost his license in 2016. A filmmaker, Mark Archer, who had sat down and apparently talked with his doctor before he was deceased, said um, this. He was quoted in the Daily Caller. The filmmaker said that Clothper's Cloth, clinic was filthy, dirty, full of clutter. I'm fearful of what they're going to find in the clinics, Archer added. What we saw at the clinic that he would let us see it wouldn't surprise me. Do you anticipate this investigation would also go into the clinics that apparently he still maintained even though they weren't operating? Absolutely. Uh, he was he was suspended indefinitely back in 2016, and those facilities are still standing. They're in uh, uh, the cities of Gary, South Bend, and Fort Wayne. And we would anticipate uh, in our effort to find the facts of what's occurring, uh, the first step is to determine, are there more fetal remains still out there unaccounted for uh, uh, and left in this degrading situation. So that's one of the first steps that we're working on right now. So in reading about the case, I know that there were some very young patients, one allegedly as young as 10, others 13 years old, that he didn't report as he was supposed to. That was possibly part of what lost, led to the loss of his license. Um, there were all kinds of record keeping issues, pain management, medication issues, all kinds of things. I mean, how does someone like that continue operating for decades? Uh, in this it's, day and age. It's, it's, it's shameful. Uh, as you pointed out, there were, there were so many things. Um, incompetence, uh, uh, lack of professional standards, uh, lack of reporting, lack of cleanliness, lack of keeping adequate staffing there uh, in these facilities. Uh, I can tell you that the Indiana Department of Health was after him for quite some time. Um, and uh, prolific is, is an understatement in terms of what he was doing. Uh, but the conditions were awful. While abortion is legal, uh, states like Indiana have the right to regulate that process, and part of that regulation is making sure that uh, operators like Dr. Cloffer uh, are operating in, a, in as healthy of an environment as possible. Clearly, that's not the case here. So uh, we do anticipate uh, some additional uh, mm -hmm. frightening findings as we continue this investigation. Okay, very quickly, we're just about out of time, but you talked about regulations, uh, and there's some pushback uh, about some of the new, very tough tough pro-life or anti-abortion, as opponents will call it, legislation out there. Um, in CBS News uh, reporting this. Uh, they say last year the National Abortion Federation recorded another new record high, 1,369 reported violent acts against abortion clinics. They say providers interviewed by CBS News said they've seen a direct correlation between the rise in violence and the wave of anti-abortion legislation passed this year. Any comment on that? Well, I think we're moving in the right direction in terms of, of in, in Indiana, where we're uh, calling on additional regulation uh, to make sure that we do situations like this, where we have uh, unborn children that can be uh, disposed in a, in, a, in a humane way through cremation and burial, recognizing the dignity of human life. These are the types of things that we need to move towards, and uh, I'm thankful that Indiana and many other states are moving in that direction. Well, I know people across the spectrum on this particular issue are shocked at what's been found in this doctor's home so far. We'll stay with you on the case. Uh, Indiana Attorney General Curtis Hill, thank you for your time. Thank you, Shannon.